CO <clears throat> just processing some uh, firewood today <clears throat> so that we can cook on the fire um, today we're gonna be cooking um, just a hamburger patty on the fire just to give you a, an idea of how to cook on there and um, that's gonna be it I'm gonna talk a little bit about tattoos tattooing and piercings um, within the Cherokee and Eastern Woodland uh, tribes of the southeast all the way up to the northeast so stay tuned and we're going to get into that um, which i think is pretty cool i think you guys might find it a little interesting so i'm going to get this fire started and then we're going to start cooking up and talking about tattoos and piercings within the uh, native tribes around um, this area So basically what we're going to use today is going to be this guy. It's just a mess tin. Um, basically it unfolds like this and you have a lid and your pot. So or your pan. So you can get these at Walmart for I think I paid like four bucks for the whole kit. Which it comes with this, um, a bowl, a cup, and I think a spoon. Um, it came with a whole bunch of stuff, which, and I've used it over and over again. So the, you know, just because it came from Walmart doesn't mean it's not good quality. Uh, it's actually good quality stuff. Um, I haven't had any issues with it so far. So it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good little investment for me because it's lightweight and it's easy to carry and um, it works really well. So just give you a heads up on that. But one of the most main important things is having enough wood. That's going to be the biggest deal that you need for this. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to spray a little bit of uh, olive oil, cooking oil. Now you don't have to use that, um, but I'm like right here at my house basically. So I'm going to use that. Move you over here to the pan. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a clove of garlic. And using my old trusty knife, I'm going to peel this garlic up a little bit. get down to the actual clove. I'm actually going to throw that in the fire because it's going to smell good. All right. So once we get down to our garlic, I'm just going to cut it up. Throw that in the fire too. I'm just going to cut it in little slices. And I love garlic. Garlic is one of my favorite things in the world. Uh, so that should be enough garlic. Get this little bug out of the pan here. And after we do that, got our garlic in the pan. I'm going to grab our hamburger patty throw it in the pan with it and we're just going to set it up here on the fire like so and that should cook get heat hot enough now sometimes what I do is I put the top on top of it just to hold in the moisture so that your patty isn't dried out and disgusting when you get it done. It's nice and juicy and tastes good. So now, while we're cooking that, I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about um, tattoos and 
Native American culture with, with tattoos and piercings. So a lot of people don't realize it, but um, especially the Cherokee had uh, tattoos. Let me move you over here so you can kind of see what I'm doing as well as uh, talking your ear off. So, okay, so basically um, tattoos, there were a lot of facial tattoos. Um, they would tattoo their face, mostly their chin, their necks. Um, any tattoos, most tattoos on their faces were all military record. So they would all be, you know, people that they killed, battle, how many people they killed, battles that they've been in, um, things like that. That's, that's where the, the facial tattoos would basically come from. And um, those were just basically their military record, uh, showing what all they did in combat and things like that. <clears throat> and some guy, some, some natives would uh, tattoo celestial beings on their faces, symbols for celestial beings. Um, you know, whether it be a sunburst or uh, they would do that on their neck, things like that. Um, some of them would tattoo uh, a lot of stuff like that on themselves. And um, it was all military record. It was basically explaining to the other tribes or other people they would come in contact with as to who they were. Um, this is who I am. This is this picture of me, this pictorial record of me. This is who I am. This is, this is me. And... Um, which I find really interesting because even today, I mean, you know, we get tattoos and it's basically telling you who the, this person is just based on their tattoos, um, their past and what their interests are, things like that. So I've, I've always thought that was really, really interesting. Um, another thing what they would do is they would, uh, they would get, they wouldn't have ear gauges like this, but this is basically the closest thing to what they would do back in the day. And that's basically why I originally got gauges, not because it was a cool thing that everyone was doing. Now that you got your coals, you can pretty much just cook on the coals. You don't really have to have a raging fire. So basically what I'm saying is, so, if the fire goes out, that's okay. If you're planning just a day trip, something small, um, you know, if you're just on a hike and you want to stop to eat somewhere, you don't really want a raging fire. That's going to last hours and hours. So, you can burn it down, you know, let your fire burn down to the coals. You can cook on the coals. The coals are, are you know, hot enough to last for a while. And um, generally, that's, that's what I do when I'm out hiking or whatever. I'll just cook on the coals, and I know you guys have seen me do it before uh, in some of my earlier videos, but you can just cook on the coal, coals, and that should stay hot enough to cook that burger. Um, and you can even stoke the fire back up and get it, you know, back to, to hot, or back to flaming up. See, it's almost, I mean, it's... It's cooking now and I'm just gonna take my knife flip that guy over all right and we'll get that guy going again piercings with the gauges and things like that with with the gauges they would they wouldn't do gauges. Well, some of them had ear spools, kind of like this, but they weren't, um, you know, acrylic and stone. Well, some of them had stone, but they weren't acrylic and plastic and things like that, silicone and all that good stuff. They were stone, bone, wood, um, things like that. And a lot of Cherokees would actually, what they used to do is they would they would slit, they would slit their lobes, and they would take their lobes and pull them back, and they would try to get them as as big as they could, and they would. They would wrap their lobe with copper, and that was basically a status symbol. Sorry, smoke is like right in my face. And when they would go into battle, sometimes they would take their lobe. God dang, man! 
Yeah, I know, it's funny. They would take their lobes and they would stretch them around behind their head and they would tie them together uh, with, with copper wire. And basically, what they would do is they would use that as sort of like a... That was like a, a battle. Uh, sorry about all the smoke, guys. Um, when they would come back from battle, if their earlobes weren't pulled out from, from being in hand-to-hand -hand combat, you were, you were a pretty bad, pretty bad dude. Because hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat, they would try to rip those out. They would try to rip their, their uh, earlobes or, you know, or kill them. So if you came back and your earlobes were both intact, you were, you were considered a, a bad dude and you wouldn't want to mess with you. I think that's pretty cool too. Um, but yeah, I mean, the tattoos meant different things. Uh, ear, you know, the gauges, ear, ear gauges, ear plugs. Um, you know, they meant different things. Um, definitively, no one really knows because there's no written record. But um, women had gauges. Women had tattoos on their faces, their necks, and you know, a lot of that stuff. Um, I've heard it theorized that those were like basically their accomplishments um, within their lives and, are, and around the village and, and things that they do and did and told their story, their life story. Maybe how many husbands they had, how many times they had been married. Um, because back back then, you know, like I said, the Cherokee, uh, they didn't really have a divorce thing. It was, you know, it was like, oh, I, I don't want to be with you anymore. Um, and then they would move on to someone else or they had already found someone else, they would just move on. So they might have how many husbands they've had on them, you know, how many husbands they've had tattooed on them, um, you know, their status within the village or the community, uh, things like that. So I always thought that was really cool too, that, you know, the men and the women did the same things just for different, um, just for different um, achievements. So um, a lot of pictures of, um, a lot of pictures of Cherokee you'll see in Seneca and and you know Creek and a lot of Eastern Woodland natives had tattoos all over their faces, all over their bodies. Um, they have strange, you know, piercings. Um, maybe some through their nose, through the lip, going back to their ear, uh, just different things. And some of them would actually scar their side of their mouth, and that would be you know, uh, it might be a storyteller, uh, it could be a a village speaker something like that to symbolize that they they talked that they were a storyteller or someone who talked you know talked within the committee you know within the uh, elder community uh, things like that I thought that was really cool so there's always something you can learn in talking to talking to elders talking to people in the uh, in the Cherokee community there's always something to learn and I always thought that, that I always found it fascinating that uh, you know they had tattoos and they had piercings and you know, all these cool things that all these kids nowadays think is you know rebellious and cool and you know it's it it's not really it's uh, it's just a, a cultural thing from way back in the day and I'm sure that there are other cultures that had tattoos and piercings as well probably probably the Norse they probably had tattoos um, you know. Uh, we know that there are a lot of cultures, indigenous cultures, in the Americas all over, um, even Hawaii, places like that who had tattoos. So uh, it's really cool to know that that was a widespread thing all over the world. It wasn't just in one thing or something that's, that's newer uh, within our ages. That it's, uh, it's a thing that's been going on for a really long time. Check on this burger here, shall we? So it's cooking up pretty good. I'm just gonna turn that bad boy over, cook it some more. It's a little bit, still a little too uh, too red for me. And it being a burger, I want to make sure it's it's well done. I don't want to. I don't want to non-cooked burger and with it slow cooking you don't have to worry about it burning it so that's also a good thing we're still cooking this stuff and we're gonna get it done um, but yeah it's just really easy to cook you guys seriously like 
and you, I don't know if you can hear it, but that's just on the coals. So you don't have to have a raging fire to cook with. Um, don't think you do. You just have to get it hot enough and burnt down enough to get some really good coals to cook on, and then you're you're good to go. I mean that thing is cooking up good, and if you could smell it, you would you would know it's it smells good, especially with that uh, garlic in there. It smells really good. So we're gonna cook it some more. This side, it's almost done. It is almost done. See, hear it going crazy but that's all you really need to cook with on uh, on a campfire you know and like I say I'll show you right now see it's it's just down right on the fire I mean it's uh, let me see if I can get you guys a better shot but it's right there on the on the coals just sitting there cooking along cooking away See, it's just boiling away, and it's just on coals. So the myth that you have to have a fire to cook with is just that. It's a myth. You don't have to have a raging fire to cook on. You just need it. You just need the coals hot enough to cook on, and that's what we got right here. Like I say, it's great for hiking, things like that. I think we can leave that top off for right now. That's it today, guys. Just uh, showing you guys that you can cook on the fire. Um, cook on the coals. You don't have to have a raging fire to do that with. I know I've said that like 20 times during this video, but I just want to stress that you don't have to do that to be able to cook a good meal on here. You just need hot coals. It looks really good. It's almost done, so I'm gonna let you guys go and I'm gonna eat this thing and uh, I'm gonna enjoy my dinner. Cooking on the campfire, it's great. I might actually just uh, sell my stove and cook out here all the time because I like it. It smells better. It, Cooking in nature gets you more in touch with, with nature and fire and uh, just all the things I love. I'm outdoors. Um, now, if it was raining, that would be a different story. I'd probably be uh, wanting my stove back. But, you know, for this purpose, it's good. You know, it's good to get out and, and do things like this every once in a while just to sort of test it out and be outdoors and be outside and, and do things that, you know, you don't normally get to do. It's good it's good for the soul it's good for your heart it's good for practice good for your mental mental stability so uh, all right you guys have a good one I'm gonna go eat and uh, take it easy happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there if you're watching happy Mother's Day to your mothers and uh, we'll catch you on the next one